The air inside Daiko's restaurant always carried the savory aroma of fried chicken and the muffled symphony of chatter from hungry patrons. The vibrant red and yellow interiors seemed like a haven of comfort in the bustling city. But there was something about the night shift that sent shivers down my spine. I was just another employee, lost in the chaos of trays clattering and orders shouted. My name is Emma, and I had been working at Daiko's for a little over a year. It was supposed to be just a temporary gig while I finished college, but the events of one fateful night changed everything. It was a stormy evening, rain battering the windows as I took orders and served tables. The atmosphere was charged with a peculiar electricity. Unease hung in the air like an invisible fog. I shrugged it off, thinking it was just my imagination playing tricks on me. As the night wore on, the unsettling feeling intensified. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but there was something off about our customers. They looked ordinary, just like any other night, but their eyes held a strange glint, a sinister spark that sent a shiver down my spine. It was as if they were sharing some dark secret, something they were not willing to divulge. I served a family of four at a corner table. Their eyes followed me wherever I went, never blinking, never wavering. When I returned to their table with their order, the father leaned in close, his voice barely above a whisper. You should leave, girl. Leave before it's too late. His words were cryptic, and his eyes held a warning that made my heart race. I managed a weak smile, muttered a thank you, and rushed away, my pulse pounding in my ears. I glanced around the restaurant, noticing that the other employees were just as tense as I was. Something was definitely wrong, but I couldn't put my finger on it. As the night dragged on, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, that invisible eyes were scrutinizing my every move. My hands trembled as I refilled drinks and cleared tables. The unease in the restaurant had escalated into a palpable tension, and I could see it in the faces of my co-workers. Then came the incident that pushed me over the edge. A man in a dark suit walked in alone, his arrival sending ripples of dread through the staff. He was tall, his face obscured by shadows, and his aura screamed danger. He sat at a table in the far corner, away from the other patrons, as if he wanted to remain unnoticed. I was assigned to serve him, and I approached his table with caution. His eyes, devoid of emotion, bore into mine as if peering into my soul. I swallowed hard, my voice quivering as I asked, What can I get you, sir? He leaned in closer, his lips barely moving as he whispered, The special. My heart pounded as I retreated to the kitchen, relaying the order to the chef. The special was a dish we hadn't served in years, a recipe lost to time. The chef grumbled about it, but there was no way I could refuse the mysterious man's request. As I brought the plate to his table, he didn't touch it. He simply stared at the food, his eyes unblinking. The other patrons had fallen into a hushed silence, their gaze fixed on the man in the suit. It was as if time had stopped. Then. He spoke again, his voice low and menacing. You should all leave. This place is cursed. A chill ran down my spine as I watched the other employees exchange nervous glances. I couldn't take it anymore. I rushed to my manager, Jeremy, and urged him to do something. But when we returned to the man's table, he was gone, leaving behind the untouched plate of food. That was the breaking point. The feeling of dread had become unbearable. 
I grabbed my jacket and headed for the exit, not caring about my shift or the consequences. I just needed to get away from that place. Outside, the rain had intensified, soaking me to the bone as I sprinted towards my car. My hands fumbled with the keys as I struggled to unlock the door. Just as I was about to get inside, a voice came from behind me. You can't escape, Emma. I turned, my heart in my throat, to find Jeremy standing there. But there was something horribly wrong with him. His eyes were no longer his own. They were empty, soulless. He took a step towards me, and I stumbled backward. Jeremy, what's happened to you? I stammered. He didn't answer. Instead, he continued to advance, his movements jerky and unnatural. Panic surged through me, and I fumbled for my phone. I needed to call for help. But as I dialed 911, I realized there was no signal. The rain had grown heavier, and it seemed as though the world outside Dykos had ceased to exist. I had no choice but to run. I abandoned my car and sprinted down the empty streets, the rain blinding me as I went. I didn't look back. I couldn't. It took me hours to find my way to the nearest police station. When I finally arrived, I was a mess, my clothes soaked, my voice hoarse from screaming for help. I told them everything about the strange customers, the ominous man in the suit, and Jeremy's terrifying transformation. The police investigated Dyko's, but they found nothing out of the ordinary. The restaurant was empty, the lights were off, and there was no sign of the employees or the customers. It was as if Dyko's had vanished into thin air. I was questioned for hours and they tried to convince me that it was all a hallucination, a product of stress or exhaustion. But I knew what I had seen. I knew it was real. Months passed, and I tried to move on with my life, but the memories of that night haunted my every moment. I couldn't shake the feeling that Dykos was still out there somewhere, lurking in the shadows, waiting for its next unsuspecting victim. To this day, I can't bring myself to pass by that empty lot where Dyko's once stood. The restaurant may be gone, but the horror of that night lingers, a ghostly presence that refuses to be forgotten. And I can't help but wonder, who were those mysterious patrons, and what was the sinister secret they held?